Welcome back to another video in my full stack web developer roadmap series where you'll go from never having written a line of code to deploying your first full stack web application. If you want to learn more about this series, check out this video up here and you can also click the links in the description to get the video, you know, the playlist for this series along with the GitHub repository and all that good stuff. Today we're going to be talking about JavaScript operators and be sure to stick around till the end because I have a handful of challenges for you to try out and solve on your own to practice the skills that you learn in this video. Before we get into it, I want to review a couple things. Uh, the first thing being the 100 days of code challenge. If you're not already doing this, I highly recommend that you do it. And all you have to do is go on Twitter and use this hashtag 100 days of code. And basically you code one hour at minimum every single day and then you tweet about your progress along the way. It's a really good way to uh, share your progress with others and it's a very supportive community on Twitter. So uh, don't be shy, it's a really fun challenge and it's great to hold yourself accountable this way. Before we talk about JavaScript operators, I want to do a little review of what we talked about in the previous video, which was JavaScript variables and data types because they're gonna actually come into play during this video. So if we right click anywhere in our Firefox web browser and click inspect element, uh, let me make this a little bit larger for us so that we can see. And then you go to the console, you're going to get into a REPL, or I think that stands for read, evaluate, print, and loop, which basically allows you to execute JavaScript uh, without setting anything up. So we're gonna be using this to uh, code in this lesson, but also to review what we did last time. So last time we talked about JavaScript variables. And the way that you declare and assign a variable is one of three ways. We can say uh, const and then a space and then the variable name. We're just gonna call it A here. And then you give it some sort of value. This is a valid way to define a variable. We can also do it with let A equals 20. And we could, or not, we can't use A actually because we already declared this up here with the const. So we need to do something like B. And then we can also use var, but I don't recommend using this because it's kind of an outdated legacy feature of JavaScript. But nevertheless, it still works. We can still declare and assign a variable that way. Now we also talked about how you cannot reassign um, something that you assigned as const. So if you wanted to say value will not change as the variable name, and you set that equal to 20, and then you try to say value will not change equals 30, it's gonna give you an error because you assigned it with const. But if you say, instead of const, you say let, and then value will change equals 20, then you can come down here and say value will change equals 30, and it lets you do that. So that's the difference between const and let. Again, we don't use var because it's kind of a legacy uh, keyword in JavaScript. Now we also talked about the different data types that you can use. So I'll just use the const keyword for our variables here. We'll say my string equals hello world. So we can define a string value, which is represented by these little uh, quotations, the single quotations, and declare that as a variable. Now we can also, again, I just pressed the up arrow on my keyboard to get that last command that we typed. And we can kind of circle through all of the commands that uh, I have typed along the way. Um, but anyways, we can declare a string. So we'll say the second string. Uh, this is basically just a different variable. And we can use double quotes to do the same thing. So these are functionally equivalent. Some style guides would recommend that you use single quotes. Others would recommend double quotes. It doesn't really matter. You just got to pick one. So that's how you define a string. And if we wanted to define a number, so my number, we just give it a number, that's pretty easy. We also have Booleans, which are gonna either be true or they're gonna be false. So that's pretty easy. There's only two answers that you can possibly have there. And then finally, we have arrays and objects. Let me clear some space here. So we'll start with my array and we can fill that with pretty much anything. So we can do some numbers right here. So that'll be our first array. And then maybe we can say our second array will be uh, something like string one and string two. 
And if you remember, we can access the properties from these arrays by using bracket notation. So we just look for the index. Um, this would be the zeroth index, the first index, the second, and the third. So we use that here to identify different objects or different uh, values within that array. And then finally, we have objects, which are going to be a little bit more complex, and they're kind of the, the cornerstone of JavaScript. Um, but we can say property one equals some value, and then, so that's a string value. And we can access that by just saying, using dot notation. So we just say my object dot, and then property one, and that's going to give us some value. We can also, with objects, use bracket notation, and if we pass in the string version of that property, it will still give us some value. So that's just a quick review of how JavaScript variables uh, work and all the different data types. Now we're gonna take these concepts and extend them a little bit further in talking about JavaScript operators. So the first thing we gotta basically resolve is what is an operator? Well, an operator is something that exists in all coding languages, not just JavaScript, the one we're working in. You'll see these operators in anything from JavaScript, Python, uh, you know, Java, C, C++, all of these different languages have this concept of operators. And there's not a really great way to explain it without just jumping in, but basically how I'd summarize it is an operator is something that allows you to either compare two values or more than two values. Um, you can modify values, modify variables, you know, combine them together. It just allows you some more flexibility in, in kind of to test the uh, different equalities of different variables. So I know that's a kind of a tough explanation, but let's just jump in, you'll see what I mean. Now there are four main types of operators. We're looking at arithmetic, assignment, comparison, and logical operators. You'll see how these kind of fit in in just a second when we jump into them. We'll start with some of the easiest ones, which would be arithmetic operators. So this would be plus, uh, minus, or addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So you can see how this works, it's pretty easy. We can have a series of numbers, and, and remember, we're using a JavaScript console which basically reads the value of a JavaScript expression and then prints it back to us. Once we start writing code in files later in the series, we're not gonna be able to, um, like let's just say some random variable here equals 20. And you can see that all we have to do is type in some random variable and press enter, and it's going to evaluate what the uh, variable actually has stored in it we don't actually have to use this console.log statement that we have been uh, looking at in prior videos. You know, you definitely can, and it's gonna print 20, but you don't have to. You can just type it the variable. So this is going to be very useful when looking at these operators here. So in any JavaScript console, you can just take numbers like this. So we'll say 20 plus 50 and that will equal 70, and it shows how it evaluates those. And this plus sign in the middle is considered a JavaScript operator. So you can already start to see what these uh, operators actually represent. You can also do something like 50 minus 20. I'm trying to space it out here for us, but we can say 50 minus 20 equals 30. And we can also do some division. So 20 divided by two is 10, um, as well as multiplication. Two times two is gonna be equal to four. So these are all what we call operators. This plus operator, the subtraction operator, division, and multiplication. And these are the most basic arithmetic operators. At this point, you might be wondering, well, what are we doing here? I've never seen this uh, syntax written before. Well, this is not actually valid JavaScript code. Um, it works here in the console, but if you tried to write it in a file, it's not gonna work out so well. Generally, you're going to be doing these operations and assigning the value to an actual variable. So let's say that we want to do a result variable and we wanna say 20 plus 50 divided by two or something like that. And we save that and now we print out the result and it's gonna be 45 because we did 20 plus 50 is going to be 70 divided by two is 45. 
and then it stores it within this uh, result variable. So what we call the right side here, and this is going back to the prior lesson, we talked a little bit about the left side of the equal sign and the right side of the equal sign. Um, so this equal sign right here, so we got left and then right. Everything on the right side is what we're gonna be calling a JavaScript expression. And so we're using all of these different values along with the operators to create some sort of expression that is going to be evaluated in full. And then once it's evaluated, it's gonna take that single value that it um, came up with and assign it to the variable on the left side of that equal sign. There are actually a couple more arithmetic operators as well. So we can use something called a modulus operator. So let's do 100 and then a little percent sign, and then we'll say 50, and that's gonna equal zero. And basically what this is doing is doing a division problem, so 100 divided by 50, and then it's figuring out what is the remainder of that division problem. In this case, 50 is a factor of 100, it goes into 100 two times with no remainders, so we're gonna get zero. But what if we said 100 modulus, I don't know, 77? Well, we're gonna get 23 because 77 goes into 100 one time with a remainder of 23. So this may not seem very useful to you right now, but I promise you there's gonna be times when you're coding where this modulus operator will come in handy. Moving on, we also have the exponent operator. So if we wanted to say, I don't know, eight to the power of two, so generally you would see it written like this. Well, this is not actually what the exponent operator looks like. We would have to put in two stars here and we'll say eight to the power of two is gonna equal 64, eight times eight is 64. And that's how we use the exponentiation operator. So that's two little stars. You can remember that where the multiplication is gonna be one star. So eight times two is 16. And then if we do eight double star two, that's eight to the power of two. So that's the exponent operator. And then finally, there's a couple operators that are not going to kind of fit into this, um, this schema that we've been looking at so far. It's gonna be a little bit confusing, but I'll try to explain it best I can. Uh, one of those is going to be the increment operator, and then the next will be the decrement operator. So let's say that we have a variable. I'm gonna intentionally mess this one up. So let's say that we have a starting number, and that will be equal to zero. Now notice what we used here. We used the const um, keyword here, so we cannot reassign this value. So the operator that we're trying to use here is called the increment operator. And the way that it works is you t take a variable or some value and you put two plus signs at the end. And when we press enter, you're gonna see that it's invalid because we have a const declaration or a value that cannot change. Now, if we wanted to declare this with the let operator, so we'll say start number, this is a different, uh, or actually let's just clear the, the whole screen so that we're, we're very clear on what we're doing here. So we'll say let starting number equals zero. Now this value can be reassigned. So all we have to do is say starting number plus plus, and when we press enter, it's gonna say zero, but the actual value of the starting number variable is actually equal to one. And we can see that by printing it out once more. And if we do this increment operator again, and then we print out starting number again, we're gonna get two. So you can see how it's adding one to the variable. And this is actually equivalent to saying starting number equals starting number plus one. So you take the previous value and you add one. So if we press enter, now you're gonna see that the starting number is equal to three. Now we can also do this with a decrement operator. So we can say starting number, uh, actually let me clear the screen real quick. We'll say starting number which is currently at three and put two little minus signs at the end and it's going to now equal two. And we can do it again, a couple minuses and now it's equal to one. So you might say, well, why is this useful? In many cases, when you're going through loops, which we're gonna talk about in a future video, this is going to come in handy.